from your local election headquarters. This is Big Country Politics on KTAB. Welcome back to Big Country Politics. We're here right now with Abilene Police Chief Stan Standridge. We're talking about the upcoming addition to APD. It should be, it's a pretty exciting thing that we're looking at. It's the automatic license plate readers. So how, how exactly do those work? So what we uh, sought permission from the city council and received was the ability to leverage more technology. Um, this really came to a head with the recent bank robbery on South Treadway where license plate reader technology was really instrumental in developing a person of interest. Um, I don't want to disclose any of the trade secrets that we ultimately would use, but to make a long story short, uh, my staff came to me and said that this would be a very good asset for the police department. And so I want ever, all of our viewers to recognize that we didn't use any general fund dollars. We actually used uh, narcotics seized dollars to pay for this technology. Um, allocation approved by the city council was a little over 80,000. And so what ultimately they purchased were uh, two mobile units. They'll be put on a north side car and a south side car and also a trailer that can be deployed on the right of way either on the interstate or maybe one of the major highways that serves as an ingress egress to Abilene. And now those are just constantly reading images as they come through of license plates and they're just constantly scanning and compiling and placing that into a database? One of the things I didn't even recognize is um, that's already occurring in Abilene. I, I, I had no idea, but uh, commercial entities, specifically credit card companies and bank companies, already pay local tow trucks. The, the tow trucks already have these devices on their vehicles. And in three months alone, I think they read 40,000 plates in the city. So the technology is already present. What we haven't had, because we haven't paid for it, is access to those records. Well, why do we need access? So when uh, anybody is out there reading plates, whether it's a law enforcement driven data or commercial driven, you know, through the tow trucks, uh, we will receive a hit within literally a second of a stolen vehicle or a vehicle associated with an amber alert where a child has gone missing, maybe a silver alert where a senior citizen has gone missing. We'll receive those instantaneously. Um, that's good for us because it's going to help us address some of our critically missing person issues and also address some of the property crimes. Uh, one of the things I didn't fully appreciate until my staff really kind of uh, dove deeper into the technology was you have the ability to put a vehicle into the system that may be related to a murder, as an example. And so when uh, officers are out or when tow truck drivers are out and they actually come across a vehicle that's wanted in relation to a murder, it then sends us a notification. So it's really good information to have. Uh, we're just really trying to leverage more and more technology. So these mobile ones will obviously be attached to squad cars. They'll be collecting just wherever that driver goes. And then the stationary one, that's just sitting and it's reading everything as it goes by. When it takes all that information, is that, in a, is that at a national level or is that at a state level? Or who all can get that if they need it? What law enforcement agencies are, have access to it? It's a great question. Uh, the information is actually stored on the cloud, so to speak. It is not housed within the Abilene Police Department. It's actually housed by the company that's providing this technology. And as long as we provide reciprocating agreements with other law enforcement agencies, then they can have our data and we can have their data. So that's important. So we did our research and we learned that all 10 sister cities have already been using this technology. So Abilene is one of the last ones. Uh, again, the bank robbery really brought this to, to light. So. My goal would be to enter uh, reciprocating agreements with all of those agencies so that we can have access to theirs and vice versa. As it relates to the commercial data, we paid additional monies, the city council allocated additional monies so that we could actually have access to all of that. And so it's a uh, plethora of records as you can imagine, which then leads to the question, well, is that information access going to be abused? So uh, I'll comment on that. Uh, the police department doesn't have enough discretionary time to go out and proactively identify a needle in a haystack just because we're curious about what you're doing on any given day. Um, personally, I could care less what you're doing on any given day unless you're associated with a missing child, a missing senior citizen, a murderer, or driving a stolen vehicle. 
if you have some kind of uh, correlating factor with a crime, then obviously we're concerned. But if you're a private citizen operating your vehicle on the streets of Abilene, your police department has no time to, uh, to go in and snoop necessarily and invade your privacy. So I can give you everybody uh, assurances, not to mention it's against the law. If a peace officer does that, it can be, if it's done for personal gain, it's a class A misdemeanor in the state. I don't think any peace officer is gonna trade their license, their, their vocation to know what you're doing and when you're doing it. And it is one of those things that at face value does seem very scary to think. You get almost this uh, this big brother sort of view of it when you think, well, they can see where I'm at at any moment, know which direction I'm headed and where I'm headed. But at the end of the day, the trade-off for being maybe concerned about that thing that won't happen is that you have a lot more power in being able to bring in those people who are violating the law in some way. Yeah, so I'll give you the example. Um, your viewers will be very aware that we've had people coming in from the Metroplex and uh, either stealing or burglarizing ATM machines. If the Metroplex law enforcement agencies communicate to us a partial tag or a full tag or even a really good description of a vehicle and we have our unit deployed out there on the interstate in the right of way, we can input that information and it's going to immediately notify us. But I wish it were like on TV where we then know every subsequent movement. No, all it's going to do is send you an immediate notification that that vehicle passed a geo boundary. So now we know that vehicle is now in the city limits. So what would we do? Would we take that information, notify all on duty units, hey, you need to immediately start tracking, looking for that vehicle anywhere near your convenience stores and or your uh, banks where your ATMs are located. So using technology to benefit us, um, but it's not anything like you see on Hollywood where we know exactly what you're doing when you're doing. Ah. We don't have enough We don't people. have a satellite view no. looking down, enhance, 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 no. nothing like that. Nothing like that. So can these tell which direction someone's headed or it just knows that someone has entered your, I guess your airspace, so to speak? Yeah, so if we set it up on uh, incoming, so let's say it's uh, westbound I-20, it's gonna alert us that somebody um, related to a stolen vehicle or a missing person or a criminal offense passed the geo fence, so to speak. So. The concept is, and Mary Williams and I talked about this a lot in previous years, is Abilene is both blessed and cursed to be positioned along the interstate. We're blessed because it brings a ton of revenue and tourism into the city. We're cursed because it also invites crime from persons who live outside the city. Well, we have seen that. We've seen that with some very violent crimes. We've seen that with property crimes. By creating this concept of a geofence to alert us on vehicles that we're already looking for based on intelligence, that is really gonna help us mobilize and ultimately try to interdict or prevent some of these crimes. And that's something that you've mentioned many times and I know that you've held, uh, you've held it really close to you is that a lot of things that APD does aren't to get rid of crime because that's not something you'll ever be able to get rid of, but this is to make sure that you're responding to crime when it does happen. Yeah, the reality is, um, we, the Abilene Police Department, represent way less than 1% of the population. If we don't leverage technology, then I would submit to you that we're actually exposing our citizens to more risk. So we have to be willing to embrace technology. I'm very thankful that the city council and the city manager, the city manager was supportive of this, uh, that we're able to move forward. And now that we've had that approval, how soon can we see this uh, start working? Well, for the last couple of weeks, we've been working through all the legal documents that have to be uh, executed. And so there's dialogue uh, to make sure that um, we're good with the contract and vice versa. So I would love to tell you that within the next six months, we're going to be fully operational. And once that happens, are people going to notice anything different or is it going to be more or less uh, business as usual? I would suspect most of our citizens who have traveled anywhere outside of Abilene have already seen these units. Most people, this technology has been around for a while, let's admit that. It's not like Abilene's doing any a cutting edge thing. We can just, find, number one, financially afford it, and secondly, the city council approved it. So uh, this is not cutting edge. I don't think our citizens are gonna be uh, in any shock at all. Um, I, I'm very proud of our small unmanned aerial system drone program. Um, that's up and running. We have a coordinator that's doing that. We're getting more and more people licensed to operate those drones. So we've got that. We've got the license plate reader technology. So lots of good things happening in your police department. Well, good to hear it. We'll be keeping an eye out those to take place in the next six months maybe if all things go as they should. 
And that's a look at those license plate readers, how they're going to work, and when we can see them in effect. We'll have more Big Country Politics right after this.